Hi, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I'm just thrilled to be here with you today. And I don't normally say thrilled, but today it is certainly the case because this is my one year anniversary, my one year birthday on YouTube. Yay! I am so excited to be here today. My first video was posted March 23rd of 2017 and it is now March 31st of 2018. I passed it by a few days, but ladies, I am so happy that I've been a year on YouTube and it has been a wonderful, wild, crazy ride as many of you know I've gone through several different surgical procedures I have been posting makeup videos <laughs> some of them look good looking back and some of them uh, let's put it this way you're always learning and my channel has grown very very large and I am so grateful to all of you because together we're we're creating this community of women that is coming together to support each other to love each other to learn from each other and I could not be more pleased and more grateful and that is the main thing that I think I'm feeling in my heart is just tremendous gratitude that all of you are there with me and that we've gone through this wonderful year together and I can't wait to see what the second year will bring. How we're going to do this is this is just a chatty kind of a question and answer format so I'm going to be answering some of the questions that you all ask me in the community tab of my YouTube channel. Now I'm going to start with the easy questions. There were some more difficult ones at the end which I'm actually looking very forward to talking with you about but I'll start with the easy ones. Ocean Girl asked if I had any makeup mirrors that I could recommend and really I don't. I use this one which I think is a Jordan and actually it's a terrible makeup mirror. It is lighted but barely lighted but I do put my makeup on in my makeup room every morning which has an intense amount of light and so I really don't need this. One that I have in my bathroom that I used for many years was a Con Air and I think Con Air seemed to do a pretty good job. Darla Miller asks for any tips that I have on using makeup while wearing glasses and Darla that was an excellent question and I'm actually going to be doing a video about that in general I would say you need to lighten up on your makeup <laughs> these are my reading glasses and as you can tell it just they glare at you sorry about that with your glasses everything needs to be a little lighter because the glasses tend to magnify make sure you do use under eye concealer because everything that you have under your eyes gets magnified by your glasses just lighten up on your makeup, lighten up on your liner, really no black liner if you can help it when you have glasses. Lainey R asked, what is your Desert Island skincare product? And my number one skincare product is really Retin-A. However, if I were really on a desert island, I would not need Retin-A. And really, who would care how I looked? But it would be sunblock. And I really think that after all these years, and I have had a lot of years on this earth, sunblock is the single one most important thing you can do every day to keep your skin looking good. Molly Bird asks, and she's just darling here, very cute young woman. She says, I hope not too personal, but do you do fillers or Botox or anything like that? I was thinking of trying out fillers by a dermatologist. And yes, I do do Botox and I've done it for 18 years, I realized. I think I started at 42 and I'm going to be the big 6-0 here in a month. And I had fat injected in my cheeks and my nasal folds about five years ago. I would not do that again, we'll put it that way. But as long as the fillers you're using are temporary, I say, you know, go for it and see what you think. And Dizzy Lizzie had a funny question. She said, sorry if this is too personal. Nothing is too personal here, girls. But I often wonder how the beauty guru's husbands feel about their wives going to bed with all this anti-aging stuff on their faces every night. I'm really not a beauty guru, but thank you. Thank you for including me in that. I will preface this by saying that every night I get frustrated because Alan basically just falls into bed and I have another 10 minutes of putting Retin-A and all these serums all over my face. So when I come to bed, my face is shiny with all this guck on it. I asked my husband last night about your question, if, if it bugged him that I came to bed with all this stuff on my face, and he said, you come to bed with stuff on your face? He, he didn't even know. I mean, that's, that's how unaware of me my husband is, I guess. But one thing though, he doesn't like my wedge pillow. I do sleep on a wedge pillow to help with wrinkles and under eye bags. And he doesn't like that because he says he's not able to get as close to me as he would like to. And Sarah A asked about my job and what I do. And basically for the last 22 years, my sister and I have been in business together. We have kind of an insurance type company. It's not really a health insurance company. It's, it's too kind of boring to explain to you, but it has to do with health insurance. And we have done it now for 22 years. And she does the accounting business end of it. And I really do the marketing sales, which is also one of the reasons that I think my channel has grown is that I did marketing for 22 years in me and my sister's company. And then I worked earlier than that, another 10 years I worked in my parents' company and I did sales and marketing for them. So I really have it in my mind uh, how to market products. And now with my YouTube channel, the product is me. 
I optimize my titles and my tags and there's some other things I do. And so I like to make sure that when someone is searching for a certain topic, I come up hopefully near the top of the list. Now I'm going to get into the slightly harder topics and I'm just going to go down through and see what I find here. They're in no particular order. And this is from Suzy Q and I love Suzy Q. Hi Suzy Q, I see you all the time and I appreciate you being with my channel. She says, hi Beth, my beautiful friend. She says, Beth, how do you deal with disappointments in your life? And quite honestly, this is something that I have really been learning even more in the past year because in the first half of my life, I tend towards depression sometimes. And so I would get disappointed about something and I would just really go with that and I would use it to make myself feel lousy. How I try to deal with it is I have a philosophy that God does not give bad gifts. And this has helped me so much in my life. Although at first, when something negative happens, you know, I, I do. I'm a human being and I can go to the depression or I can go to the anger, something like that. But very quickly, I sort of try to get myself motivated and remember that God doesn't give bad gifts. So I pray and I say, God, this seems like a disappointing situation. It seems like a negative, but I know you don't give bad gifts. So turn it around and show me the blessings of this situation. If you believe in God, then you understand that it's kind of helpful to have him involved in your life. And I do believe in God. But even if you don't believe in God, it doesn't matter. What it does is it gets you out of that stuck place where that disappointment has gotten you because you have no power there. And it really brings you to a position of power. So your mind starts looking for the blessings in any seemingly negative, disappointing situation. And so that's how I deal with disappointments is I pray and I say, God doesn't give bad gifts. Show me the blessing. And nine times out of 10, there's a huge blessing in even things that seem disappointing. Then the second part of Susie's question is, how do you meet new women to be friends? And this is a tough one. I have to say, when my kids were younger and they were involved in sports and that kind of thing, school activities, it was easy to have a lot of women friends because we were all doing those types of things together for our children. Well, unfortunately, now that I'm near the big 6-0, it is not so easy to meet women friends. And there are times when it's a little bit lonely. I mean, I have to admit that. And really, I love my channel because when I'm answering comments from all of you, I kind of feel like you're my friends and I really do appreciate that. And I will say that in terms of my friendships with other women, I really don't have to have a ton of friends. I'm not like a big partier at all. In fact, I don't party, but I really prefer to have a small group of close friends that I can really bear my soul with. And that, you know, when, when I ask them how they're doing, they really tell me. What I've tried to do is just develop, you know, just a very few close friends that we have that kind of relationship with. And one way I try to nurture these friendships is with one particular friend every two weeks, we have it on our schedule that we go out to lunch together. There are another two friends that I have that we go to dinner together supposedly once every two weeks. However, I will say that that usually works out to be more like once a month. But I think in terms of nurturing your friendships with other women, it's important to have a schedule and say once a month, we're going to a movie, something like that. And then I had three questions about menopause and going through that. One of them was LA Rocker Girl. And she said her mother was 56 when she went through menopause and she just breezed through it. And what was my experience? And really, I don't remember the exact age I was when I went through menopause. I think I was in my early 50s and I pretty much breezed through it. I didn't really have any hot flashes and the depression was not too bad at that point. I just kind of breezed through it. I did do the bioidentical hormones and I did them on and off until maybe about a month ago actually. Decided to stop the bioidentical hormone approach because we don't have anyone in my town that can really monitor it in terms of you know blood tests or anything like that. So I wasn't really sure that they were doing anything and they were $75 a month and insurance didn't cover them. So I have stopped the bioidentical hormones and I'm going to be going in to a doctor that will just prescribe Primarin which is what my mother was on and she is still on that. My mom is now 80 and she's been on it since her early 50s and she's had no troubles, but I'm certainly no expert on hormones. And even with regard to the bioidentical hormones, I was not very good at taking them. So it was very, very sporadic and on and off. So don't look at me as some poster child for someone who has been on them because I really have not done that. And then I had another question about menopause from Angela Jane and she's just darling. And Angela, you come to my channel a lot and thank you so much, I really appreciate that. And she basically says that she's been on hormones for the past eight years, but she's considering going off of them because she may be having another cancer scare. And then she has the question, do I think that hormones affect skin? And they may affect skin, I'm not even sure about that. But Angela, if your doctor suggests you go off of them, if you have an estrogen dependent cancer, you should definitely not be on those hormones. And your life is too valuable, Angela. And beauty is not everything. Being here is everything. I would say talk to your doctor and if there's any question that HRT could be causing your cancer to be exacerbated, go off of that, not now, but yesterday. 
because having you with us, Angela, is the most important thing. And I mean that from, from my heart. Here's a good question. And this is from Gobi512. Thank you so much. She says, prior to reading your card at the end of the videos, you used to mention God and the universe. Lately, you only say God. Being an atheist, I appreciated you including the universe. Why have you dropped it? And Gobi, I am so, so glad that you brought that up and I've put God and the universe back in. And in fact, I used to say that because I want to make sure that I don't exclude anyone. As many of you know, I am a Christian, but I did not start this channel really even intending to mention God at all. But it is just so much a part of my thoughts in terms of my faith and my belief in God that it just kind of started to come out and then I sort of had to explain it. So I had to let you know as a Christian. First, I think everybody's feelings about religion or lack thereof, it's their own deal. And Gobi, I am so sorry if you felt excluded because I think that God wants everyone at the table, believers, non-believers, all kinds of different religions. And in fact, most religions to me, if they're based in love and understanding and acceptance, I'm, I'm okay with that because to me, God is love and that's the most important thing. And my background in terms of religion is very odd because growing up in the Bible Belt, you know, Midwest where I did, my parents were agnostics. They took me to the Unitarian Church because they had a respect for all religions and I've really developed that too. I have a huge respect for all religions. We would like go to Sunday school and we would learn to cook Jewish bread or something like that. We had a big respect for people's beliefs or lack thereof. My brother does not believe, and he is one of the greatest people you would ever meet in your life. Giving, in fact, my sister and I, we're both Christians in the family, the only two Christians in the family. But we always say that Les has been put here by God because he's like our angel. And my sister and I are the Christians, and he is a non-believer, but he's a wonderful human being. So in answer to your question, I'm putting back God in the universe. And please don't give me any hate on that. That's just my own personal belief and everyone has their own beliefs and I totally accept whatever beliefs you have. Jean Moore, hi Jean. She asked, is there anything that you regret not having done when you were younger that it's perhaps too late to do now? And I will say that I also have the belief that life is perfect. So really looking back, everything I went through, even the negative things, they all led to where I am today. So even though my path went up and down and all around and I made some mistakes, I feel good about it because all of that stuff ended up with me where I am right now, which is a good place. Now, Clement Ekpo has a similar type of question. She says, hi, Beth. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I'm excited. Been a subscriber for a while. I want to know if you could go back in time, what would you have done differently? I'm 22 now, so what would you be doing at my age? So at, at 22, what I would do differently is I wouldn't have the fear because I think at different points in my life, I had certain things I wanted to do, but I let fear stop me. And in, in my case at 22, I had been a theater major in college and I really wanted to go act in plays in New York City, but I was too afraid to, to, to leave Kansas and go to New York. So looking back, I probably would have just gotten rid of that fear and just gotten out there. And for all of you younger ladies, and in fact, all of you ladies, let's take fear out of our lives. If there's something that's been put in our hearts that we really feel we need to do, then I think we should listen to that and go for it and get rid of fear. Or even if you can't get rid of fear, feel the fear, but do it anyway. Make your list of what you need to do to accomplish that goal, to accomplish that dream, and get out there and do it. Gina C. And Gina, you are so darling, and I see you a lot, and I appreciate you coming. How old were you when you had your kids? Any advice about aging? And I had my kids at 25 and 29. I've got two boys. Now they're 34 and 30. So that's when I had my kids. She says, any advice you would give about aging? And, and I would reiterate what I said before. Do not ever think about the number. It doesn't matter. And if the number bugs you, like the big 60 kind of bugs me, reframe that. Give it a different number for yourself. Like a viewer recommended that I look at it as my second 30. And I love that because it kind of says I learned a lot of stuff in my first 30. And now I'm going to get to go through it all again, knowing what I know now. Okay, Edna Flynn says, happy birthday. My questions are, why did you start a channel? And I started the channel because around 57, 58, about a year before I started my channel, I was really looking old and saggy and I just wasn't happy with how my makeup was looking or my skincare. I basically had hardly any skincare at that point except sunblock. And I started following Angie of Hot and Flashy and Emily Noel and all these different people here. And I started improving my looks and feeling better about myself. And I've always wanted to help others. And so I thought I would love to be sharing what I'm learning with the other women out there. And then she says, what have you learned during this time? And what's the most enjoyable thing about having a YouTube channel? 
Well, the most wonderful thing about having a YouTube channel is all of you and feeling like we're creating this community of like-minded women who are coming together to, you know, learn about skincare and makeup and feel good techniques. One of the things I've learned is that God has a sense of humor and never be surprised if your life turns around and hands you your dream. As I mentioned before, I was a theater major in college and then I did a children's television series called One of a Kind and I do believe that, that each of us is one of a kind and special with special gifts to give, but it was a children's television series that I did for a few years and then I got into radio news and TV news and then amazingly enough in my late 30s I started seeing a few wrinkles and a, you know little bags and sags and I thought, you are getting too old to be on TV Beth and so I voluntarily took myself out of TV news and went a more standard path where I went and worked in my parents business for about 10 years and did sales and marketing for them. But I think God has a sense of humor because I was afraid to be on TV at 40 because I thought it was starting to look bad and here I am at my age now and I've been given this gift again. Yes, it is TV from my third bedroom, but I'm back in TV again. It's just the weirdest, weirdest thing. Thank you, God. Well, that's the end of part one of this interview. You all had some wonderful questions, and this video turned out to be over 30 minutes long, so I'm breaking it into two parts, and I will tell you, the good stuff is yet to come. So if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe and click that little bell so then you can hear the rest of this, including some interesting info about what it's like here in the YouTube community. Never a dull moment. I did just want to tell you how grateful I am that I've been on YouTube for a year. It, it's been wonderful getting to know all of you. It has really been one of the most rewarding experiences of my life. I just feel so blessed. God has been so good to me, and so have all of you. And I wish you well, and I hope that you have a fabulous second half. Take care. See you next time.